All right. Uh, so I went through something a little quickly yesterday um, just to see if the radio was uh, worth saving or not. And now we know it is. And I'm going to show you what I did. I'll show you how to use maybe some tools that you have in order to troubleshoot your radio. So there's an antenna. That's the symbol for an antenna. It comes into the radio. There's going to be a connector here on your radio and you'll have some coax to the antenna. These using the amplifier here. Okay, those, those little triangle things are using the amplifiers. They're going to make the signal bigger so you can, you can uh, operate on it. And the first thing on a radio is going to be this, uh, this uh, mixer. Okay, so this is like the first, I think when in this radio it's called the uh, first IF. Um, and um, IF just stands for intermediate frequency. So we're going to take the incoming frequency, we're going to mix it with some other frequency, and we're going to get a, 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 a third frequency, okay? So when you turn the dial on the front of the radio, you're adjusting this thing. And it could be a voltage-controlled oscillator. It can be a phase lock loop. It can be a direct digital synthesis. It could be something that generates some things. So if we have 144 megahertz coming into the, uh, into the uh, device, okay, then our VCO is going to be 144 megahertz plus 10.7 Okay, and so it would be uh, 154.7 megahertz. Okay, and when you mix 154.7 with 144, you get 10.7. So the output of the uh, it, this mixer will be um, 10.7 and you'll amplify that, run it into a filter, and that will select out just the uh, mixing product that you want, and it can be very selective. So this 10.7 kind of tells you how fine you can tune between channels, okay, the 10.7, and that's a really nice one in this radio. And then eventually you mix it down farther and farther. You do things differently in single sideband radios or AM radios or FM radios. And in FM radio, when you mix it down, you're also going to do a FM to AM frequency change. You're going to change FM into AM. It's called a discriminator. It doesn't really matter what you call it. And uh, it's usually a filter and an and a amplifier and some other things. And um, this, this unit here then converts the FM into AM. And then you turn the AM into a speaker and you get the sound out, right? So, I mean, this, this part's kind of simplified. We're mostly interested in, in what's happening up here, okay? So, if the radio is working correctly, we can inject 144 megahertz and we'll hear it, okay? It needs to be modulated, though. If it's not modulated, you won't hear anything. So it needs to, in this radio, it needs to be FM modulated. Um, and it should be able to hear it. And we did that, and the radio couldn't hear it. Okay, we can do that again. But the radio didn't hear anything. Um, but what if we could magically inject it here? We could put in the 10.7 megahertz also. It has to be modulated FM. It will, that 10.7 then will go on its merry way. So you're, you're basically eliminating this half of the radio saying, okay, we know there's something bad here, but can we at least try out this part of the radio? And we'll put in the 10.7. So let's try that out. And we're going to use the uh, Tiny SA as our uh, function generator. Okay, so here's the Tiny SA. I'm going to turn it on. Uh, I'm going to set the mode to low out. I'm going to set the frequency to 144 megahertz, and I'm going to set the modulation to narrowband FM. I'm going to set the frequency to 1000. So I have 1000 hertz, uh, uh, narrowband FM, and now I'm going to turn it on. So I'm going to turn it on, and I have a, the antenna on the uh, tiny SA, so it's kind of transmitting out this antenna. Very low signal, you're not going to get in trouble. And, 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 and nothing happens. It's not, we're not hearing anything. I can, all we're, all we're getting is static, all right? So then let me go ahead and change the uh, frequency here to 10.7 megahertz. And, and there you go, we hear the tone, okay? And so, um, so what are we doing? Well, we're just kind of letting it pick up in here and it's going, it's going through. Okay, now how is it picking it up? Well, uh, this board here uh, has the 10 megahertz section on it and it comes from the bottom board. The bottom board sends the 10.7 up to the 
up, up to this board. And um, it actually comes in all these wires here. And these wires are not the right wires to use, okay? These are just some, some loose wires. And they're very long. And the reason is there's also some, some long... Can you see that? There's actually some long... You can't see it. There's actually some long wires on this side too. So who, whoever was working on this radio had put long wires on it so they could take this unit and put it someplace else, but keep it in circuit. So this is basically the... Uh, the 10.7 megahertz after the mixer and everything comes into this board. And then uh, these wires over here, in fact, this one's broken. Uh, this one goes to the uh, microphone jack. So the mi th this is the microphone input. This should be a shielded cable and this should be a shielded cable and they're not. So I need to, I need to work on that. Now, the interesting thing about this radio, so it's working and I'm FM modulating. Okay. Let me show you what happens if you don't have any modulation. Okay. I'm going to turn the modulation off. Okay, and there's nothing. Now let me let me turn the, the low output off. Oh yeah, so you hear you hear static. Let me turn it on. You don't hear any static because there is a carrier, so it goes quiet, but there's no sound on it. There's no modulation on it, okay? And you need to turn that modulation on before you'll before you'll hear anything, okay? But what if we, oh, that's very loud. Um, what if we change the modulation to, let's say, AM? Okay, it's quiet and we can just barely hear something. Okay, but it's very, very, very faint. Now, the interesting thing of this radio is it's the actual, it's the ICOM IC 245E, the E version. And I found a, I found a manual for the E version, and it's the one that has the single sideband on it. So let's tell the radio, receive single sideband. It's this button here. And whoa, it's doing something, it's doing something crazy, okay? So, let me, let me turn this down. So, um, single sideband is like AM, but only half of it without carrier. And so I'm sending out like more information that it's used than it's used to. And so it's giving us that funny tone, but it, it's encouraging. I believe that maybe the single sideband uh, section uh, works okay. Um, I need to find some way of modulating single sideband and I'm, I don't know if I can do that or not. I, I need to look around the, uh, look around the lab and see if I have the ability to do that. But then we can test out the, uh, we can test out single sideband. Um, but yeah, uh, so there's a little bit of AM in there. That's interesting. I think the AM is getting through there because of the discriminator um, can operate a little bit on AM, but mostly on FM. So let's go to the out. Let's go back to modulation narrowband FM. Oops, that's wide FM, narrowband FM. That's right. So we get a very, very clean tone. And we can change the frequency here on our tiny SA. Oops, let's go back. Oh, it turns off when we're doing it. Let's turn it to 440. Uh, and now it's a different tone. So you can set that whatever tone you like on your, uh, on your tiny SA. And we're using the little antenna here as an injector, okay? So if I take it away from the radio, nothing happens. And if I bring it back to the radio, you can see that you can kind of try to figure out where it's where it's picking it up okay you could also use one of those rf probes that i've shown on the spectrum analyzer you can use one of those little probes that bring it around and try to figure out what's what's going on okay let's turn that off let's turn this off all right so uh there you go uh using the tiny sa to troubleshoot radios uh it, it's a, it's a handy tool okay so i think the next thing i want to do is I want to take a look at this this unit here, um, and I think I need to remove this unit to get to to underneath it. So let me. So there was four screws in here, but the two screws are missing, uh, they're, and they're no longer here. So underneath, let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Underneath uh, this connector wasn't connected, and uh, there's a place for it right here. But I believe it just brings these uh, buttons down, allows you to do the button. So they weren't necessarily weren't necessary to operate anything. Um, they're just like uh, 
AGC, noise blanking, things like that. So they weren't necessary for the function of the radio. And so they just put long wires on this one and long wires on that one, and they could take this whole unit and put it someplace else, uh, which is what I'll do next. But what I wanted to show you underneath, and I can't because it's too dark. Where's my, let's see, where's my flashlight? Here's a flashlight. Can I? Can you see in there? Yeah, you can see in there. You see that big red label back here, way in the back? It says SEAL. And then it's just got this warning label here, and it says the ICOM CMOS LSI for the digital face lock loop is contained in this unit. The unit is sealed and should not be opened. To open may void the warranty. So uh, uh, that particular CMOS LSI unit is really, really susceptible to dying. And so they've put it in here and said, don't touch, and they die anyway. So most likely the thing that's wrong with my radio is that the, uh, there's, no, there's no local oscillator. Uh, this, this unit's probably not outputting uh, the correct frequency. So that'll be the next thing is figure out what, well, what frequency is it operating? And maybe I can inject a signal at that particular frequency. Maybe, maybe this phase lock loop is not doing 144. Maybe it open loops to 150 or something. We'll figure out what it is. We'll, we'll start sniffing around with a spectrum analyzer and try, trying to see what's going on. Um, there is two local oscillators in this particular machine because it's got single sideband and it's got, it's got uh, duplex and simplex. I believe there's a VCO back here and there's also a VCO up here on the, uh, in the PLL place. So there's two, there's two LOs and neither one of them seems to be working um, as far as I can tell right now. So the next thing to do is to see if, if, if we're getting oscillations, if we are getting oscillations, then maybe it means that, uh, uh, so, so either this section is broken and it's not, it's not oscillating or maybe this amplifier is broken and the signals just can't come in. So these, these die quite often and these die quite often. So it's kind of 50-50 uh, right now, which one's broken. Oh, we'll try to figure that out next video.